Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about solving linear homogeneous recurrence relations with constant coefficients. Start with this simple example. We have this um, recurrence relation, a n is equal to 2 a n minus 1, <coughs> meaning every term is twice the previous term. So here you see this sequence here, 2 to the power n, the terms is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. They satisfy this recurrence relation, meaning every term is twice the previous. So we say that this is a solution to this recurrence relation. Here's another one, 5 times 2 to the power n, 5, 10, 20, 40. Each term is twice the previous. So again, we see we say that this is a solution to this recurrence relation. Here's another one, a solution to this recurrence relation. So you notice that this has an infinite number of solutions. I can take 2 to the power n times it by any number, I get another solution. So a n is alpha times 2 to the power n, where alpha is any real number, is a solution to this recurrence relation. We call this a general solution, a general solution. So now, if I give you a n equals to n squared, that is not a solution. That is not a solution. Nine is not two times two times four. Four is not two times one. <clears throat> so the general solution, this one here, we call it explicit formula and we call it closed form solution. Now, so let's go back to this here and try to solve it. So a n is twice a n minus one. I'm going to start with a zero is equal to five. So solution, we will use the uh, iterative approach. a n is twice a n minus one is twice two a n minus two. This a n minus one is replaced by a n minus two, two, two a n minus two, which gives me two to the power two a n minus two. And then a n minus two is replaced by twice a n minus three. That gives me now two to the power three a n minus three. Keep going. And then you get to the point where two to the power n minus one is e uh, uh, a n will be two to the power n minus one times two a zero. 2 times this will give you 2 to the power n times a 0. Then that generates the solution to the recurrence relation is 5 times 2 to the power n because a 0 is 5 in this situation. So look, watch the uh, recurrence versus closed form. So this is my recurrence relation. This is its solution. So a0 is 5 given here. Here, A0, you just replace n by 0, n by 0, you get this 5. A1 twice A0, that means 10. A1, you replace n here by 1, you get 10. Same thing, so A2, A3 is twice A2, twice 20 is 40. A3, you put n 3 here, you get 8 times 5 is 40. The same, the same thing here. Now, if I, at this point, if I ask you to find A8, in this recurrence formula, you will not be able to find it because you need to run it all the way to seven to be able to find A8. But here, just replace N by eight and you get the answer. That's why it's called direct formula or closed form solution. Now, in general, uh, first, th this kind of recurrence relation with any constant here, any constant here, to solve this, you do the same thing. We will use iterative approach. Same thing, c squared. You replace this by c times a n minus three. And you keep going. And then the answer will be a n is a zero times c to the power n. Well, what is the, the general solution to this here? It's simply alpha 
times 7 to the power n. 7 to the power n alpha times, well, alpha is any real number. Now, if I add uh, now a starting point here, then the general solution is this, ignoring the initial condition. And now you say, okay, I know A0 is 2. If I replace 0 here, I get A0 is equal to alpha, because 7 to the power 0 is 1, is 2. So alpha is 2. And therefore, the solution, the solution now to the return solution is An is equal to 2 times 7 to the power n. Now, here are some classifications of recurrence relations. L is for linear. We're going to use L for linear, nonlinear, homogeneous, non-homogeneous, constant coefficient, variable coefficients. So watch now these examples. This here is a linear, homogeneous, constant coefficient of degree two. These are the coefficients, they are constants of degree two because I need to go back two terms to be able to calculate a n. And you will see shortly why we call it homogeneous. Here's another one that is linear, homogeneous, constant coefficient of degree three. Now, some students uh, get confused and they think I have to have three terms here to be of degree three. That's not the case. Here's another example. I have two terms, but still this one is of degree three. It's as if you have plus zero a n minus two. So because you need to go back three terms to pick up a n. So that's linear homogeneous constant coefficient of degree three. Here's not what happens is I took a linear recurrence relation here and I uh, homogeneous and I added a term here, a function of n, this becomes linear non-homogeneous, constant coefficient of degree two. This one here, as you see, I have a variable here, so it's a variable coefficient. It's still linear homogeneous. If I add a term like that here, it becomes non-homogeneous. This one, when you have like a n minus one squared or a n minus one times, this is becomes a non-linear. Now, what we know, what we know how to solve these kinds of recurrence relation, these here, linear homogeneous, constant of degree three, four, five, of any degree, we, we know how to solve those. We know how to solve some kinds of non-homogeneous, depending upon what you give me here. But the rest of them here, unfortunately, we don't have a method to solve, except for maybe some special cases non-linear or when the variables are, well, the coefficient are variables. So today we are going to talk about linear, homogeneous, constant coefficient of any degree. And in a following uh, lecture, I will cover cases where we have non-homogeneous uh, recurrence relation. So today we're going to be talking about linear recurrence relation of degree K with constant coefficient. This is the general definition of it, plus Fn. So if Fn is zero, that's homogeneous. If Fn is not zero, is not zero that's non-homogeneous. Today, we are going to cover this case only. In a future uh, video, I will cover the non-homogeneous. So now solving linear homogeneous recurrence ratio of degree, I'm going to start with degree two. Here's an example. Uh, so a n is equal to five a n minus one minus six a n minus two. This is obviously, it's a linear, a combination of linear, linear combinations of terms. Homogeneous, there's no term here, uh, function of n. Constant coefficient of degree two. So the way to solve this is we replace it by what we call characteristic equation. It's an algebraic equation of degree two. So here I put in red some, some terms here that, that they are not really needed. But that to show you what happened, we start with square, uh, uh, R square, one, zero. So you really don't need to put the one here, you don't need to put R to the power zero. So this is your characteristic equation. <coughs> So we bring those terms to the other side, factorize, 
and we have two solutions to this recurrence uh, to this uh, algebraic equation two and three so it so happened that a n is equal to two to the power n and a n equals three to the power n are solutions to this recurrence relation they satisfy this recurrence relation so i have in this table this is two to the power n these are the terms this is three to the power n these are the terms and then i added them i subtract them and i put here another n squared right here so here you will see that any term here is five the previous term minus six the term before it so for instance take 16. 16 is five times eight minus six times four 40 minus 16. take this 729 is five times 243 minus six times 81. same thing here and you can test any of this here too but if you take this n square like look at look at, the, look at the nine here so nine is not equal to five times four minus six times one so this is not a solution this is a solution this is a solution this is a solution this is a... now uh, so this recurrence relation have an infinite number of solutions it's only when you give me starting points initial points then you will have only one solution so now let's prove uh, that two to the power n is a solution to this recurrence relation Okay, so you have a n is two to the power n, a n minus one is two to the power n minus one, a n minus two is two to the power n minus two. So look at the right hand side now, the right hand side, this here, the right hand side is five times two to the power n minus one, minus six times two to the power n minus two. So I'm going to make six, three times two, because I want to multiply this two by this to make it n minus, to make it, to make the power n minus one. So you get this. Now the same term, you subtract two times this, two times n, and that's two times n happen to be the right hand side. So let's prove that a n equals three to the power n is solution to a n is the solution is another solution. And here I want you to pause the video and try to solve it on your own and come back and check your answer. All right, so let's see the solution. Again, a n is three to the power n. That's the right, the left hand side. So a n minus one is this, a n minus two is this. So now the right hand side is five times three to the power n minus one, minus six times three to the power n minus two. Now this six, I will do it now two times three. And this three times this will give me n minus one as a power, subtract them get three times three to the power n minus one, and that is the right hand side. That, that is the left hand side. Okay, so now I'm going to solve the same recurrence relation, but I have two initial conditions, two initial conditions. Then I will have only one solution in this case. So the general solution, ignoring the initial conditions, is this, uh, we found that out in the uh, previous example that two to the power n is a solution three to the power n is a solution any combination of the two will be the general solution alpha one alpha two are any real numbers so now i need to use the initial conditions a zero is two so you replace n by zero here zero here so you get alpha one plus alpha two is equal to two a one is eight you replace one here and one here. So two alpha one plus three alpha two is eight. You can solve this linear equation, uh, lin uh, system of linear equations. You find a alpha one minus two, alpha two equals to four. And therefore the solution, the solution to the recurrence re relation with initial condition is this. And that's called again, explicit formula closed form solution now it's your turn to pause the uh, the video and uh, 
uh, and solve this recurrence relation subject to these initial condition. Okay. Okay, let's see what you did here. So we need to solve this. Here's my characteristic equation. You factorize this, you get two answers, that negative three and five. So a n is negative three to the power n, and notice I put negative three in parentheses. A n equals five to the power n are solutions to this recurrence relation. Now, any combination of these two, you add them, you subtract them, you multiply this by any number, you multiply this by any number, you add, you get a solution. So the general solution is alpha one times negative three to the power n plus alpha two times five to the power n. Alpha one, alpha two, any real numbers. Now here I am telling you to notice that negative three to the power n is not negative three to the power n. This is alternating sequence. It's negative, positive, negative, positive. We'll start with positive if n is zero. But this one is, you made it all terms are negative. These are not the same. So therefore, anytime you have a negative root, put it in parentheses. Now we need to use the initial conditions. Uh, elf, uh, when n is zero, we are given one. Uh, when n is one, uh, we are told is negative 11. So if you go back to the CSE one and negative 11. So, Again, you solve this linear system of equations, very simple system, and you find alpha one equals two and alpha two equals negative one. And now you put the solution, that solution now, to the answer to this solution, this is, is two equal, uh, uh, an is equal to two minus three to the power n minus five to the power n, alpha two is minus one. Now, I am going to remind you of uh, solving second degree algebraic equations. In the previous examples, we got examples where the algebraic equation was easy to factorize and was easy to solve, but that's not always the case. So when you have a, uh, a quadratic equation like this with a different than zero, the, the, the way to solve it is to first calculate delta, which is equal to b squared minus four ac, AC this is called the discriminant because that is going to define if i have one solution two solutions or no solutions so if delta is positive you have two roots two solutions x1 is negative not minus b plus square root of delta over 2a x2 is minus b minus square root of delta over 2a if delta is zero you have a multiple root so because you made delta zero here, see they become the same here. So x1 is equal to x2 is equal to negative b over 2a. If delta is negative, then there's no real roots. Then now you get into the complex variables. We're not covering that here. So now, example number nine, what is the explicit formula for the relation? This is a very famous relation. It's you see it uh, many, many times in several applications. Uh, sometimes they start with one, one. This one is, I'm starting is with zero and one. And this is called Fibonacci sequence. So I want you to pause and try to solve this recurrence relation. Okay, let's see what happens here. First of all, what is the characteristic equation? It's uh, r square is equal to r plus one r square minus r minus one equals to zero if you try to factorize this you will not be able to do that so you need to solve it using the uh, quadratic equation uh, solution of quadratic equation so a is one b is negative one c is negative one you get delta to be five Then R1, R2. So now the general solution R alpha one is alpha one, the first root to the power n, the second root to the power n. Alpha one and alpha two are arbitrary real numbers. 
So now we can use the initial conditions. When n is zero, this would be one, this would be alpha one plus alpha two is equal to zero. When n is one, f one, you put one here, one here, you get one. So now you solve this linear system of equations, you get alpha one equals one over square root of five, alpha two minus one over square root of five, and therefore the Fibonacci numbers satisfy this. If n is equal to one over square root of five, the first root to the power n minus one over square root of five, the second root to the power n. That is again, reminder, it's called closed form solution. At any point you want F10, you put N10 here. Okay. Now, solve the recurrence relation. Now we're going to solve this, uh, this recurrence relation. Again, we are ignoring the initial conditions. Characteristic equation. You find you can factorize, this is easy. So you have R is equal to two is a multiple root. Now we have a different situation here. In this case, a n is two to the power n is a solution, and a n is n times two to the power n is a solution. These are two independent solutions to this recurrence relation, and therefore the general solution is alpha one two to the power n plus alpha two n times two to the power n. Alpha one and alpha two are real numbers, are any real numbers. So now we need to. Uh, use the uh, initial conditions alpha one alpha, uh, a, uh, alpha a zero is equal to alpha one when we'll put n zero here zero see that cancel this term so it is equal to one and a one is given to me equals to five so that's two alpha one plus two alpha two is equal to five you find when you solve these uh, two uh, equations here you find alpha one is equal to one Alpha two is equal to three over two. So the solution to the recurrence relation with initial condition is this here. And sometimes we put two to the power n outside and that tells me that that was a repeated root, root twice. One plus three over two n, n is any, n is integer greater or equal than zero. Commonly made mistakes, some students will use only this here, they don't put an N here. So if you do that, what happened is A0 is one, is alpha one plus alpha two is one. A1, two alpha one plus two alpha two is equal to five, and that's really impossible. You can't have alpha one plus alpha two is equal to one. Two times alpha one plus two times alpha two is equal to five, it's impossible. So make sure when you have a repeated root, you have to multiply the second one by n when you have a, 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 a root that was repeated twice, okay? And then what happened if a root is, we'll talk about that later. Now we're going to go to solving linear homogeneous recurrence relations of degree three. So let's start with this example. Now again, characteristic equation, r cubed now because of degree three r square 14r minus 24 r to the power zero but we don't put that here so we bring everything to one side of the uh, equality and it so happened that the characteristic roots are two three and negative four you might ask me how i found that i will explain that to you a little bit later so we'll see how we got those roots but now we have these three roots so immediately I can write the general solution is two to the power n, see, three to the power n here, negative four to the power n, again in brackets, alpha one, alpha two, combination of the three different independent roots. Alpha one, alpha two, alpha two are real numbers. So now I'm going to solve the same, but I'm giving initial conditions. I need three initial conditions to solve this, uh, to find the solution. So from the example 11, we have, this is the, the, the general solution. Now we use initial conditions. When n is zero, 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 you get alpha one, 
plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3. I was given this to be equal to 2, 2. When n is 1, so you have 1 here, 1 here, so you have a 3, and you have negative 4. And the, the uh, is negative 16. Here, 34. So now we have a linear uh, system of equations. We need to solve the linear system. Now, you need to be organized in order to solve a system of this form. So I'm calling this one E1, this one E2, this one E3. It helps knowing what you are eliminating in order to solve this equation. So first of all, I'm going to take, and there's different ways of doing it, but I'm going to take 2E1 minus E2. I am multiplying all of this by 2 and subtracting it, subtracting from it this here. This way, I'm eliminating alpha 1. So I get this equation. I'm calling it E4. Now I'm going to take 4E1 minus E3. 4 here minus this, because 4 minus 4 it cancels this. So you get this. Now what happened is I eliminated alpha 1 from these two equations. So I have another linear system of equation now with only two variables, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Now, the way I did it here, I took 2 times this and added it to this, 2 times E4. Why 2 times E4? That makes 12 here, plus minus 12 is 0. So I eliminated alpha 3. So here, immediately, I find, find alpha 2 to be equals to negative 1. Now it's a substitution. Substitute in E4, in E4, or in E5, it doesn't matter. You get alpha 3 to be equals to 3. Now, substitute in E1, you get alpha 1 is equal to 1. So we found alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. We substitute that, and this is, will be the uh, solution. Now, find the roots of the equation. Now, this is the one I told you about the roots. Now, how do we find the roots of this equation? Normally, if it's a simple equation, uh, some, uh, if, if, if it so happened that 0 or 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 3, 4, minus 4 are a root, then we can, we can solve this by reducing it to a second degree equation. So it happens here that 2 is a root. If you replace r by 2, you find this to be equal to 0 when you replace r uh, by 2. So it, in this case, this third degree equation is equal to r minus 2 times polynomial of degree 2. And I need to find this polynomial of degree 2. The way you do it, you have to divide now this by r minus 2. And you take the highest power here, you divide it by the highest power here, you get r squared. This r squared, you times it by r, and you times it by negative 2. So you get r cubed minus 2r squared. And then you subtract, which means you are replacing, you are changing the, the signs here. This cancels. You get r squared minus 14r plus 24. Again, the highest power divided by highest power here, you get an r. You times r times r gives you r squared. R times, r times negative 2, negative 2r. And then you replace, you change the signs, add, you get negative. 12r plus 24, you take this and divide it by r, you get, you get negative 12, and you see you get zero. If you did that correctly, you get a zero at the end. And therefore, now I know that this here is r minus 2 times this. And this here, if I can factorize it, fine. If not, I will use the, uh, the formula that I just described earlier. earlier. So in this case, it can be uh, factorized, and the roots are 2, 3, and negative 4. Now, you can use graphing calculators or online cubic equation calculators to find the roots. Here, I'm providing three places where you can go and find the roots easily uh, without having to do, to do this, uh, this kind of work here. It depends upon what your teacher allows you to do. Okay, so now uh, find the general solution to this equation. The general solution. So again, pause and come back and uh, see if you got it right.
here we go. The um, characteristic equation is R cubed is equal to six R squared minus 12 R plus eight. Remember it goes two, one and R to the power zero. You take that to the back here. And then uh, if you find the, uh, the, the, you find the roots to be R equals two, R equals two, R equals two. Now the general solution is watch here what I did. Alpha one to the power n, that's one of them. The second one, I times it by n. The third one, I times it by n squared. Okay, and alpha one, alpha two, alpha three are uh, any real numbers. And you see, I'm not going into the theory. I'm not showing you how these are done. So sometimes we write it this way to indicate that to the power n was repeated three times. Now, again, the same equation uh, as an exercise with alpha, uh, alpha one equals to zero, a one zero, a two, a zero, so, uh, sorry, a zero is three, a one is two, and a two is negative 60. So pause and come back. Okay, here we go. The general solution, we just found it to be this. So now we are going to use the initial conditions. When n is zero, 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 the alpha one is three, given. When n is one, so you have one here, one here, one here, so alpha one, two alpha one plus two alpha two plus two alpha three is equal to two. When n is two, that would be four, that would be four. There'll be four, but four times four is 16. Four times two is eight. You get this one is equal to negative 16. So now we have to solve this uh, uh, system of equation. This one is easier because you can get this alpha one and put it in here and here. So, or what I did here, I got A2 minus A1, E2 minus A E1. This way I am eliminating alpha one. And I, I get I do also a e3 minus e1. So I get these. And now you have uh, two equations and two unknowns. You need to solve that. So you can subtract if you want. I mean, there's so many ways of doing it. The way I did it here, I, I put a e5 minus e4. I subtracted these two. I get alpha three is equal to negative seven. And then I substitute that with either one of these equations in E4. In E4, alpha 2 is uh, negative, uh, alpha 3, negative 7. You put negative 7 here, take it to the other side. It becomes plus 7 minus 2 plus 5. And here's the final answer. Now, uh, what is the general solution of a linear homogeneous recurrence relation if the roots are? Two, 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 which means two is if is with multiplicity five is repeated five times. Think about it and come back. Here's the answer because it's repeated five times. So you have n n squared n cubed into the power four two to the power n. Okay. Okay, now here's another one where your the roots are two, 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 negative five, negative five, and seven. So two of multiplicity, multiplicity three, negative five, multiplicity two, and seven is multiplicity one. Let's do it and come back. Here's the answer. So negative five is of multiplicity. Wait, see, first of all, two, uh, two to the power n is of multiplicity three. So you have alpha one, alpha two n, alpha three n squared. In other words, you have alpha one, two to the power n, alpha two n, two to the power n, alpha three n squared, two to the power n. Now, negative five is repeated twice. So you have alpha four, negative five to the power n, plus alpha five n, negative five to the power n, and the last one is repeated one time, alpha six, seven to the power n. Notice I kept this in brackets, okay? Don't put minus here, and otherwise you make all these terms negative. So later on, I will be producing um, 
linear non-homogeneous recurrence relations with constant coefficient. And this is the end of the of solving linear homogeneous recurrence relations with constant coefficient. Please subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this lecture and see you soon.